guys, today I am going to work on uh, propagating the massive bleeding heart that I have in my front yard into three different plants. <laughs> I'm really excited about that because I've already propagated it, I think I did it twice last year, scattered some throughout and they all did really well. It was funny because the reason I was thinking about sharing this video with you guys was because I was on Instagram maybe a week or so ago. And I actually stumbled upon thing and it, it was this uh, gardener and she was saying like, uh, you know, most things, most perennials you can transplant, but uh, then she listed off like three or four different ones that you shouldn't transplant. And one of them was bleeding hearts. And I just thought that was so interesting because I'd never heard that you couldn't transplant them. And every time I transplant mine and propagate it, it works great. And so um, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna take down this massive bleeding heart because it's at the very end of its life right now and it's finally looking pretty bad. <laughs> And then we are going to take a shovel to it, break it up into three different chunks. We'll leave one where it is, and then we'll place two throughout the yard somewhere. So that is project number one. But before I did that, I was looking back through all of the videos that I posted over the past couple months, and I was realizing that I just never give updates, <laughs> which I'm sorry. Um, so I wanted to give some updates on some of the videos that you, if you've been watching my channel for a while now, you've watched these all happen this spring and early summer. And so let's just get started with update number one which is our garlic this is the garlic bed the garlic is looking like corn you guys and we are finally reaching the point where we are getting scapes that are bending around so this one is ready to be chopped off and used i'll probably make these into some kind of like garlic scape pesto or something i've chopped them up and just put them on salads i put them on pizza they're delicious they're like garlicky green onion looking things and um, so we've got the two different varieties of garlic here. So this chunk up to here is the Georgia Crystal. And then from here to here is the Chesnick Red. Now, um, I also have a volunteer potato plant that found its way into the dirt and decided to do its little thing. So I guess we'll also have potatoes in this bed. Um, so I am going to wait until since these just these scapes just came out like within the last week and I will wait until these are done Till I've chopped them all off and then about a third of the leaves die You can see that these bottom ones are kind of starting to yellow out and die So we'll wait till probably this bottom layer of leaves and you can see a couple of them back here That one's pretty died out. So these are gonna be ready really soon. These ones will be ready shortly after that and then the last thing we planted in this bed was shallots. These we will harvest in the same way that we do the garlic. We can chop off the scapes. They're delicious. So they're called uh, shallot scapes. And um, every shallot that we planted turned, like we planted one shallot, you know, and it turned into like eight or 10 per shallot. So these are really successful. And I'm feeling really excited about having this whole garden bed be pulled out. And then this fall, I will plant shallots and garlic again, but we'll probably do it in another bed, maybe that one or whatever. Also, just like me for reference right now. Isn't that amazing? It's so, so tall. And like the width of some of these, like a quarter, diameter of a quarter, maybe. Oh, big garlic. So that is looking great. So I will be making a video very soon of chopping off our scapes, harvesting them, making something out of that, and then harvesting all of our garlic and shallots. That is coming up really soon. Then I did a video. Also, this is not in order. This is just in the order that I'm walking around the yard to show you updates. I did um, a video where I planted a bunch of spinach, kale, lettuce, Swiss chard. I wanted to give you guys an update on how that garden bed is doing. So the first batch, this is a green lettuce, which was getting a little bit eaten by these little guys. Oh, look at that little slug, you guys. Do you see him? Bunch of little baby slugs. Get out of here. Ew. Some type of green lettuce. I don't remember the variety. Oh, look at, there's a little bee taking a nap. Oh. And then um, we've got butter lettuce. We've got two varieties of kale. And then we've got our spinach, which you can tell is trying to go to flower, so I keep plucking it. We'll see. It's at the end of its life. And then I did, um, oh, I did Swiss chard. So the Swiss chard actually really, that was the only one that didn't do well. I thought that one was going to do well, but 
not so much. So that row of Swiss chard, very, very sad in comparison to that. I haven't been out here harvesting a lot of greens, but I usually just with, with these ones, I cut off like whatever leaf I want. Um, I don't usually harvest it in like a full head. So I just keep harvesting and clipping on it. Um, but it'll be time to rip those out really soon. I'll probably harvest the greens and then get rid of it. And then I did a couple, maybe three weeks after that, I did another batch. So this is the second batch of spinach, kale, different variety of kale, lettuce. And then I also have a couple nasturtiums plopped into this bed. So there's some nasturtiums here, some right here, little babies right here. So that is the update. I usually have one bed, full bed, that's just like all salad greens. And so this is the salad green vegetable bed this year. And it is looking really good. We need to eat some salad. Tomorrow night, we're eating a gigantic salad. And then I might also um, freeze some of that spinach and kale. Next update is on the rip, did a video where I ripped out a whole strip of sod that was alongside my house right by these garden beds here and then I tossed in like an entire big packet <laughs> a lot of um, perennial wildflower seeds these are not weeds these are all perennial wildflower seeds it looks like grass because I planted it so heavily so I mean there's so many varieties of plants in here I don't know if I can name really any of them off the top of my head I'd probably have to go back and watch the video to know what I all planted in here, what was all in that seed packet. But there is a couple that are pretty distinguishable. Like we've got this little baby lupine right here. Who knows what all these are. And they kind of run all the way down this whole strip. So the wildflower planting was a complete success, I must say. Did a seed planting video, my friend Hannah and I, where we she did the winter sewing method in the jugs and I just planted in egg cartons actually. And um, I ended up just ripping those egg cartons out and for the most part planting them directly in the garden bed. And I wanted to show you guys an update on one of them, which is the Brussels sprouts. Look at these guys. They're so big. Like I didn't know the leaves on Brussels sprouts got so big. So I don't actually see any real like Brussels sprout formation happening yet. But the plants in and of themselves are looking really good. So I'm super excited about that. That's the first time I've ever done grown Brussels sprouts. And I think we might actually get a good harvest this year. That's cool. Hit stop. Pluck a strawberry. Oh my god. That is so sweet. It tastes like they're literally like candy. Oh. Oh. It was like sweet and tart all at the same time so good okay another video i did this spring maybe a month or two ago i can't remember exactly when it was um was the installation of the porch baskets um and i am just in love with them i wish i would have done this last year because i think they are so stunning so i will show you guys what we all have growing in them but they are looking good this is the full view of the front porch with the three baskets. Now these are just the metal baskets, the Cocoa Core liner. I ordered them off of Amazon. I linked them in that video. I planted everything that you see growing out of these was planted from seed. So take a look what's growing. So in this bed, each one has nasturtium and then they all have different herbs. So we've got our parsley and cilantro in this one. Again, nasturtiums, we've got a lot of dill, and we've got a lot of seeds of lavender, which is not coming along super great. Most of it kind of died off in this cold day we had, but I'm kind of waiting to see what actually ends up happening. I need to weed these. But there was lavender in there, but this one is mostly dill, which is great because I've been using this quite a bit for some of our salmon meals. I've been using the parsley and the cilantro quite a bit. This last one has the nasturtium again, it has marigolds and it has two different herbs. It has rosemary and thyme. Now these two are doing really good. This rosemary is getting a little bit beaten up because it's kind of taken a hit, getting swallowed by all this nasturtium, but the rosemary is actually doing okay. 
and I think it will survive. Oh, there's two of them. So rosemary and thyme and marigolds and nasturtiums. Also on this front porch, we've got some annuals. We've got some more nasturtiums, a different variety of lavender, another variety of lavender. And then these are all yarrow seeds that I planted. And for a really long time, they didn't germinate. So I thought it was unsuccessful, but now they're all coming up and I'm really excited about that. I hope it does well enough that I can plant it in the ground, um, you know, maybe this fall and then have it be a perennial. We'll see. Got some random stuff growing in here. Don't even remember what I put in here, but it looks like kale and maybe some kind of spinach. <laughs> Who knows? And some more really pretty annuals. Look at those colors. Last update on the porch really quick is the lady head. Look at her. Isn't she a stunner? So she's just all nasturtium. And I did a lot of dwarf nasturtium, so that's why her leaves look little. They are getting a little bit beat up. They're not look looking the best compared to some of the other nasturtiums, obviously. But she's so pretty. I can't wait till they start to kind of drape and trail and create this whole beautiful flowy hair with flowers. Okay, so that's the update on the front porch basket. Also, just to know, any of the updates that I'm giving that was from a previous video, I will link those videos down in the description below so that it's easy for you to find um, if you want to watch the full video of how they were actually done. And all of them were done this spring or summer that I'm giving you updates on. So they are relatively recent. They're not from previous, you know, years or anything. Next one is the pots that we did on either side of my garage. Now you can see... I built them, put them together, lined them and filled them with dirt, and then I added a whole bunch of stuff to them. So this one is the mint container. So this has my mojito mint, which came back from last year. It also has some varieties of chocolate mint. It has nasturtiums. You can see this mint is just popping. It has a whole bunch of different variety of nasturtiums in here. These are the Alaska mix, which I just think is this marbled leaf, which is so, so cool. And the rest are just the regular nasturtiums, which to me, almost look like lily pads. They're so cool. And they're really starting to get ready to produce some flowers and they're going to trail and just be incredible. On this side, we've again got the most massive nasturtium leaves that are starting to pop out everywhere. We've got all different varieties. And under this canopy, we have lemon balm and we have a variety of mint called, what is this called again? Corsican mint. I've never heard of it. It's kind of like a low ground cover creeping mint. I just thought it was really cool. This is a start that I got as well as the lemon balm. Oh, I did plant, um, I did transplant the oregano and put it in the middle here and it died. It did not come back from last year, which is really weird because last year that oregano was prolific. So I don't know what happened, but now I guess it's time to put something new in here. We'll see. I was thinking about something with a flower, some color. These are mostly just like tons of greenery. Okay, heading over to the side garden bed. So we installed these two new garden beds this year. And in them, I planted a whole bunch of different stuff. And some of them you will see have gone to seed. <sighs> kind of just like put them over here and forgot about them. <laughs> but they're finally doing really well. <laughs> Let's check it out. Garden bed number one had... Oh my god, I need to get out here. Hardboard down over all these weeds too. Ooh. I planted asparagus seed. So this is all asparagus that I planted from seed. Oh, aren't they just the cutest little things? And these big tall ones are the asparagus starts that I bought. Um, so they're that Ellie's Eden brand. I got them through my local co-op. They came in little tiny containers like those little tiny six pack containers that are like this big in diameter. And then they each had one or two per thing. So I planted them, they're doing really good. And then all my asparagus seeds, look at that. This must be a weed. Get out of here. But look at this. Isn't that so cute? I know the one thing they did say about planting asparagus seeds is the first couple years, it's hard to battle all the weeds. So I'm working on that process still, but I've been trying to get out here. The bed doesn't look too bad, but ugh, I just can't. It's so cute. Over here, we've got all onions. These are all onion seeds that we planted. 
this spring. They took a really long time, it felt like, to germinate, but now they're coming up and they're doing great. What I did last year was I planted them and then I just left them in the soil. They died back and then they all came back much bigger next year. So I might just leave them, we'll see. I ran a first time experiment with growing potatoes in grow bags. And I saw an Instagram reel of this homesteader lady who was showing all different methods of ways to use old chicken food or dog food bags and stuff like that. And so I ended up doing that. And I have all three of my potatoes growing in grow bags and I have um, topped them with soil twice now, um, but they're all doing really well. I think actually one of them is ready for another addition of soil. So this is potato number one. It was doing super well until I put this last load of dirt on it and then something came and ate it. So I got to treat that. But these two potato bags are doing really, 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 really well. I think I need to um, add more soil to that one. So basically every time you're ready to add more soil, you just roll the bag up a little bit um, and, you know, kind of bring the cup up to whatever height you want, fill more dirt in all around these stems, and then they just continue to hopefully produce potatoes. wonder if I can save this one. Poor guy, just getting eaten alive. So we're going to have to treat that, but um, these two looking really good, really strong. Now for all you gardeners out there who are going to see this next bed, just hold off on the judgment, okay? This is the garden bed number two, just installed this spring. So this was all bok choy that I planted from seed, and clearly it went to flower. I did know it was going to flower, um, but I didn't stop it because I was kind of curious what it looked like. And oh my god, aren't these pretty? Like, I kind of just want to grow bok choy to make it sprout flowers. Like, how fun is that? So I need to rip that all out. I need to deal with that. I just haven't dealt with it yet. This is the carrots. Obviously, as we can see, they are way overdue for being thinned. So that's on me. Got to get that done. These are the beets. Last year, my beets were incredible. I grew quite a few. I did two batches of them and they were all really successful. These ones took a really long time this year for some reason. But then all of a sudden they started to pop back and now they're looking really good. So I have a Good feeling about that. Probably need to thin these. Oh, and then this. This is the radish oasis. So the radishes are looking really good. I've harvested quite a few of them. This one's a little bit smaller, but I had some that were actually a really good size, like close to a golf ball. But they're delicious. They're really pretty. And the greens look good. So I probably need to come back, deal with that this week. Last thing I was going to show you was these three, which I don't ever think I did these in a video, but for my birthday, I went down to visit my best friend. She was temporarily in Bellingham, uh, Washington, and I went down to visit her. And the Airbnb she stayed at had this really beautiful Japanese maple, similar to this one, out in front of their house. And out in front was just literally, underneath the tree was hundreds and hundreds maybe thousands of little seedlings all with just the initial like two leaves so i grabbed three of them i put them in a little ziploc baggie and i brought them back from bellingham washington on my plane as my carry-on and i got back and i put all three of them into little four inch containers with some dirt and i've just been letting them sit in this garden bed right here and look at this you guys we have one two three four sets of real Japanese maple leaves. So do I need three Japanese maple trees? No, probably not. But do I have them? Yes. And I will keep upping the pot size. Um, so maybe I'll give you guys some more updates of that in the future, but I will definitely plant them out, um, at least one or two of them, and then maybe I'll gift a third one to a friend. But I'm just really excited because this is one of my favorite trees in my whole yard is this Japanese maple. I just think the leaf structure is beautiful. The color is beautiful all year round. I just love looking at it. I love the shape of it. I love how it moved in the wind, getting attacked by this other maple tree. And uh, I just want more of that in my life, you know? Okay, I hope you guys are all feeling satisfied. Now that you've got an update on not every single video or project that I've done this spring or fall by any means, but a decent chunk of them. I was feeling 
real guilty the other day when I realized that I've never given any updates basically to anything unless you guys just happen to see it in the background of a video. So here we are. I will try over the next couple of videos to continue as I'm working in a particular space to give an update if I knew that I did something in that area previously. I will try to be better about that um, because I think it's fun to see the progress of things over the course of time. So I will try to be better about sharing that. Okay, now that we've given you all the updates, let's split this bleeding heart into three different plants. One will leave where it is, so we're going to get two new plants off of it. Let's do it. Okay, this bleeding heart is probably like 10 years old. Like when you see this root system, you're going to be impressed. When bleeding hearts start to kind of die off, they fold out, all the things kind of wither away. That's when you can kind of trim them all back. And then they do basically just sit dormant for the rest of the season. And then next spring, they'll flush back. They last actually for a surprising amount of time. But you can always tell when they're getting bad because they start to just like flop out. Um, so I'm just going to take my clippers and I'm going to trim off all of these branches down to the kind of like maybe an inch or two above the base of where they connect to the kind of core root system. And then we will get a shovel out here and we'll basically just break it up into thirds. Let's do it. This is what my really old bleeding heart looks like at the base. Look at how big some of these pieces are. It's crazy. It's just absolutely crazy. I took off a chunk maybe about that amount last year and it grew back. I didn't even notice a decrease, decrease in the size at all whatsoever. So today we're going to take off at least half of it. Maybe these two chunks with a shovel and just get into it. And then we'll break it up throw it somewhere else, allow it to root the rest of the season and this fall, and then it'll come back next year. Piece of cake. Look at how different this space looks. This is the pile, all from that one bleeding heart. Isn't that incredible? And the astilbe was just fighting through, trying to get some light, and it looks really good. Now it's got tons of weeds, like these invasive buttercups that I hate growing under it. Look at that. While we're at it. Okay. So that counts as weeding. Look at that. I just pulled that right off the rock. I'm trying to give this still be some breathing room. I'm getting distracted by weeding this. I'll come back not make you guys just watch me weed. Oh, doesn't that feel good knowing that this is all just going to go into our compost pile over there?
Okay, so when I took a chunk out of this, it did leave some exposed area of the plant, so I'm just going to throw some compost over that so that it doesn't get exposed to the elements. Okay, we got our two big chunks, one and two, that we're going to transplant. They don't look like much right now, but... We got some compost thrown over the area that I chopped into, and we've got this whole plant left. So this will still be plenty big for next year. Let's take our supplies and go find two spots for it. This isn't a garden bed, obviously, but this is the edge. And you can see that I put this plant in here. I also put a hardy geranium in here and a columbine. And now I'm just going to take out another chunk of all this grass that's difficult to mow, which is why it's this long anyway, and I haven't taking the time to grow out here with the weed whacker. And I'm just going to pull this chunk out. We're going to plop one of the bleeding hearts in here. My friend Hannah calls this a uh, method of me just like plopping something in the lawn, chaos gardening, and I love it. All right, that is it for the project today. All I wanted to get done with is that one bleeding heart. I've been looking at it in the driveway every single day for the past couple of weeks and it has just been staring at me. And so it feels really good that we got that project done and I also feel better about being able to give you guys updates. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys liked it. If you have experience propagating or transplanting bleeding hearts in the past and you've had great success or not, feel free to comment down below and let me know. I would love to see what you guys think and if you guys have any experience doing that. And if anyone has any helpful hints, Bleeding Hearts specifically, comment down below and I will pin your comment at the top of the screen. Say goodbye, Raj. Thanks for watching. See you later.